Hey there boys and girls. Well, um, I would like to show you, as promised, my SGI Onyx rack set. I know that I am a little late in getting something out here. Uh, I seem to start every single video with this, so you have my apologies. I'm not really that busy, I'm just a lazy useless sod. If I got my shit together, I could do this a little more frequently. However, to the task at hand. What we have in front of us is a rack set of five SGI Onyx 2 systems. They're currently set up to be uh, connected together. Uh, I do not have them hooked up yet, but they are ready to be done so. Uh, I thought I would start by mentioning that I have already done a video on my desk side Onyx 2, which is at my office. I would greatly recommend that you hit this one first. I give a better description of the individual components of the systems, the boards, things like that. So. Um, do yourselves a favor if you haven't seen it, stop this one now, go find it, view it, and then come back. What we're looking at, as I said, five SGI Onyx 2s. We have upper and lower modules, and my systems are graphics and compute nodes. The uh, Each of these is called a module. Um, it does not matter whether you have computer graphics modules in uh, any particular position. The uh, Reality Monster um, set up for this, for example, that at least is initially documented in the SGI manuals, has uh, three racks, and the two outer racks are graphics modules up and down, center rack, compute modules up and down, and then third rack, graphics modules up and down. In my case, like I said, we have graphics modules at the top. You can see they have this uh, smaller Onyx 2 blaze in there, and then the compute modules at the bottom, which have a larger one. This, as you can read here, is actually an Origin 2000. The uh, Onyx 2 and Origin 2000 modules are, uh, compute modules certainly, are very similar. Uh, the only difference is that the Onyx 2 module has uh, the IO6G, which the Origin does not. Origins do not come with graphics modules, however, as that is the primary difference between them. Uh, the Origin 2000 and the Onyx 2 series, that is. Um, so, behind the cover, this is the MSC, the Module System Controller. Behind the lower cover, if we pull this off here, this is actually a, a cable shield, cable run. It's nice and tidily hinged here. Uh, and behind it we have another Module System Controller and then a, a disc back plane here. Um, it is possible, of course, to bring a standard rack up by itself and uh, you would use the discs in here if you wanted to. We have a cable bindle at the bottom. I can pop it off to probably not work like I want it. Oh, look, there it goes. So what we're looking at here is um, strikes. And so any excess cabling, particularly the Kralink cables, which we'll get to in a second, you would run back and forth and back and forth to eat up all of the extra length. Uh, this is a blanking plate. We'll have a look at a SCSI box in a second. This is a second cable bindle. Wander over. I have two units with SCSI boxes. Uh, this one, which has got its cover on and is cooperating. Usually I have to fight with it to get the cover off. And this one, which does not have a cover, again, as you can see, a whole bunch of disc trays. And then we have um, larger trays for 5.5 inch drives, for example, CD-ROM drive. This, in this case, is a debt. This chassis here, the SCSI box, is actually an Origin 200. Um, they simply have stripped all of the um, electronic components, sorry, the computing gear, you know, the main board, the node boards, out of it. Uh, but it is an identical chassis. They both have this... Um, front module here. I think the Origin 200, I don't actually own one, but I think they may have a system controller here, perhaps. Um, but it's exactly the same power supplies on the back. The other thing that makes these interesting, as you probably have noticed, is this. This is the MMSC, uh, or at least this is the display for the MMSC, which is the multi-module system controller. The MMSC is on the back, we'll look at that in a tick, but this is the input device for these when you hook them into an array or a cluster, this is what you use to control uh, the front end to the cluster. Bring the machines up, check uh, health, things like that. When the unit is running and you have this enabled, it um, will even have a little CPU graph. 
so you can see what everything is doing. Uh, let's see, now the difference between the rack and the desk side units, the um, rack as you can see is separated into two modules, the desk side doesn't make much sense, so what they've done is they have combined the graphics and the compute module into a single unit and it is literally one of these modules behind here with some skins on the sides, the top and the bottom. Uh, this is actually the correct skin for it. Um, and the primary difference is uh, the center plane. I think the power supply is different as well. I think these or the disk sites have uprated power supplies, but um, the center plane on them, instead of having like this here, and we'll see when we look at the back, just a bunch of node boards and then the XIO and the IO6G and then this with its graphics boards, the uh, disk side, as in the previous video, has only two node boards, the graphics boards uh, with a separator in between and then the IO6G and the XIO slots. This, however, is set up a little differently. The real advantage of these systems, what really brings them above and sets them apart from the other machines that were around at the time is the expandability. The desk side is not a good example, it's a standalone machine, but a standalone rack, for example, um, you could have up to two graphics pipes, that's not bad. You can buy a base unit with a single node board, that's a two processors node board, and then a single graphics pipe with, say, eight, um, actually I think the base only had three, uh, 13W3 connections. But you can then use uh, or purchase more raster managers, give it a bit more graphics power. You can purchase enough cards to give it a second graphics pipe in the single module. You can get more node boards or, the panacea, you can hook all of these puppies together. The um, boards that we looked at just a second ago here, and I'm hoping the light is good enough, these are router boards. And the router boards are used to hook the units together. Um, we have, I think these, no, we've got all three. These are uh, star routers. You have null routers. That's what's in a disk side unit because they're not designed to hook up to multiple machines. You can put these kinds of router boards in them and it can be used to hook a disk side to an array like this, but uh, by default they don't come with that. You get a rack router, which is uh, a single card which you can use to connect just a single rack. Uh, if you wanted to have one compute module here and one compute module there, you would use a rack router. Or you have the star routers, which have one, two, and then this, it's covered, but there's another connector under there. So that's a maximum of three hookups. And what you use is you cross these to the other racks. And you use this monster here, which is a Kralink cable. And these are capable of pumping 800 megabits per second across them, which at the time was phenomenal. Um, these router boards act like, well, routers, uh, honestly. They um, send packets from one machine to another. They do it lowest latency. You can hook um, each of these ports is effectively the same, so by utilizing um, efficient cross connects, you can make the uh, physical distance, the latency between nodes, as small as possible. The actual original manuals for these machines contain examples of how to hook up the racks and what kind of um, cross connects you should use, how many cables, how many ports to produce the least latency between your number of racks. Now I have five here. These machines are capable of, I believe, a maximum of 128 racks. Uh, now that requires a single router rack in between, which is quite a bit more than this. You can see, I think the maximum setup like this might be 32 racks. Don't quote me on that. I apologize. I should have looked it up. But 32 racks versus the old style system, which like in my office, the Onyx 10,000, was only a standalone rack. You could not hook them together. This is a true clustering system. It's off the shelf, it's expandable, and it's inexpensive, which is extremely important. You just add another rack. Now, of course, 
in reality, I think each of these was probably roughly a quarter of a million to half a million dollars when loaded out and new. But the difference between buying an Onyx 10,000 fully stacked out or buying one of these and then buying another, mm, clever, inexpensive, smart move.